We first came to Australia in 1841. It took a year to find ourselves in the Barossa in 1842. And we we're one of the first 26 families to settle the Barossa Valley. So my family farmed here in the western part of the Barossa, where we are now, and they farmed for quite some years. And in the 1880s, they had the idea to leave the Barossa. They ended up in a place about two hours east of the Barossa. And that was where I was born. And uh, one day my father and my uncle had a crazy idea. They said, uh, I think we should plant a vineyard. And yet there was no vineyard for something like 100 plus kilometres. And I helped them plant the vines. And uh, my father one day came to me and he said, Keith, uh, can you manage the vineyard? And I'm going, Dad, I'm 15, you know? What am I gonna? He said, uh, I don't know what I'm gonna do. He said, you could possibly not be worse than I am. And that was my first entree into the whole wine industry, was running a vineyard when I, of course, it was, there was no Google back then about how I could do this, so it was just trial and error. I think there's a lot of things that make the Barossa Valley unique. Um, I guess it's a combination of the soils that we have here uh, in the Barossa, the beautiful warm temperate climate that we have um, and I think the, uh, the creation of diversity in sites that occurs because of things like the uh, Barossa Ranges out on the eastern edge um, and, and, and the western ridge that we've got out here so yeah it's the diversity of the soils, the site um, and the climate that we have here. I was lucky that I, one of my first jobs early in my career was in the wine industry and was working for the large winery Pernod Ricard or Orlando Wyndham at the time and it was in the Barossa Valley and I so started there working in their production area and uh, um, immersed myself in the Barossa and soon and this is about the mid 1990s I thought gee I really want to do my own thing wouldn't it be great if I could create my own winery so I went on a, I went seeking various vineyards. In that process, I was asking my winemaking colleagues, I said, where in the Barossa are the best red grapes grown to make the best red wine? Because I love the Barossa reds, they're phenomenal, they're fabulous. And uh, more than one, many of them said, Keith, head out to the northwest part of the Barossa Valley. There's beautiful red brown earth over limestone, and we're seeing just some amazing results in terms of quality of wine. And uh, so I got in the car, drove around with a saw map, and. Uh, I found a property that happened to be near a creek. I want to be near a creek to get natural water, free water. So I found this, located this property and went and knocked on the door of, of the owner. Old lady came out and uh, we ended up working out how to buy the property from her. So we got the exact property I wanted. And so we then started to, to replant and I first started by getting some very knowledgeable colleagues who are experts in the fields who are smarter than I was about in agricultural science and grape growing and we mapped the property for its soils, went dug lots of holes. Um, so that soil uh, mapping, that was rare at the time. I think that's part of the secret to our success. We're able to adopt these modern techniques to apply to wonderful soils and you get just phenomenal results. So yes, we, 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 we did lots of different blocks. I think we ended up with 30 different separate blocks. Then we planted you know, mostly Shiraz um, and uh, some Cabernet Sauvignon and some Grenache, some Zinfandel and a small amount of Viognier. Yeah, I, I guess the interesting thing about this property for me um, is the diversity and that comes in several different ways. Um, we have very different soil types here, soil depths and soil types, uh, and, and that helps create interest in the wines. But also we have the eastern and western slopes on the other, either side of the creek. So that creates different um, sunlight exposure um, yeah, and different aspects that mean that fruit ripens at different speeds, the tannins can taste quite different, the flavours can look like quite different and so we end up with generally 30 or 40 different parcels of Shiraz off this little 40 hectare vineyard that all tell their own unique little story of those variances from soil type to aspect, uh, etc, etc. So that, that for me is, is what's really exciting, it's one little, one little vineyard but there's so much diversity in those sites and therefore the wines that we're creating. I love old building, it's been such a great 
um, rewarding thing for me to do uh, and my wife Ali to be able to restore these old buildings that we have here at Henley Farm back to something resembling um, their original state. Plus, of course, we've added some, some modern additions that we can then make them usable. Um, the cellar door, we call it the cottage. Uh, We've had it dated back, part of it dates back to the 1840s. You have to be shorter than five foot eight to be able to walk through the doors. I know that because I am and I just can squeeze through. Of course, next to the cottage is what we now have at the restaurant, as we call you know, the stables. And, they, and, and my understanding is they were old horse stables built in the 1880s. It's just a wonderful thing to have these beautiful old buildings. Another element of Henley Farm that I've really enjoyed our successes. We've been able to bring together our wine and the winemaking community. So being able to invite them here, experience these beautiful old buildings, and we're really lucky to find some brilliant staff through the journey, including our cellar door hosts and uh, our restaurant team, who've really done a brilliant job engaging with our customers, making them feel welcome. And we like to think that people come and visit us, you know, inviting them to our home. And the team do such a brilliant job. So, so I think it's a combination of the site, the beautiful buildings, the wonderful wines, the crafting wines, the, the, the delicious food that we have here. And we've been regarded as I think the best restaurant in South Australia five times we've won that award in the last handful of years you know. so that's a wonderful thing to be able to have have you know been been regarded as James Halley one of the best wineries in Australia which really puts you in the map in the world and have the wonderful food and wonderful engagement we've got this large hill on our western side called Mount Rufus we call it Mount Rufus and it's a few hundred metres above sea level. And what happens is that when we're only about 30, 40 kilometres from the sea, what happens is we get the ocean breezes come in, particularly late in the evenings, and, and the air goes up the hill and it, cool, and it rushes through the property and it has this cooling effect. And so we've got this wonderful combination of this ex additional coolness and in, in both during the day, in this particularly late afternoons, uh, and, and down in the lower spots. It's quite phenomenal. So there's wonderful variation in, in microclimate. That then can really impact the various styles, combined with the soils. So it's a real soil story. So now we can, we can blend, make blends of wines and the, the wine blends can be, we've got so many options up our sleeve to create different blends. And we can make single block wines that are, that are significantly different to each other. Now that's rare. If you think about uh, vineyards in Australia and particularly growing Shiraz, it's very rare that you have a vineyard like this, that you have so many different single block wines of such high caliber and then so many different blends of wines and, and thereof. Um, you know, it was described by us by when we won the Winery of the Year Award uh, that James Halliday said, in his mind, we're the closest example to a Grand Cru Burgundy producer or first growth Bordeaux. And what I believe he really was meant by that was our level of detail and our ability to get down to single block wines. What we try to do um, is create wines that tell the diversity and the story of that site. So um, we have two wines called the Beauty and the Beast. The Beauty's grown down in the creek in the cooler site where we see more elegant, soft tannin and, and, um, and more sort of blue fruits and earth in, in the flavour profile. Uh, and, and that sits in the range next to the Beast, which is grown up on the western hillside, only sort of three or 400 metres away, but more exposed, less topsoil, warmer temperatures and that produces bigger tannin and, and richer flavours. So the Beauty and the Beast are probably the two that people know of. Uh, and then the other one is our flagship, Cloato, which sits on the same uh, slope as the Beast. Um, and it's slightly older vine age, different soil type and, and a different clone, and just produces a, a wine style that is sort of the best of both worlds. Really intense fruit, but also a softness and elegance um, that, that is just a characteristic of that block. 
just been so lucky to have just a wonderful winemaker um, and certainly in the past 10 years in Andrew Quinn, he's brilliant. And he exercises that great balance between technical skill and creative flair, or well, the artistic side. And he's really been able to work that together really well. So combine the terroir, the clones, uh, with some wonderful winemaking, we're able to make just some brilliant wines. We make wines for people and we, we're really just doing it because we want people to love the wines and, and come and enjoy the place. I think our hopes for the future are just that we get more people here coming to Hentley Farm and loving the things that we make. We're going to keep trying to do better at what we do. And working with Andrew, we're going to keep trying to make better wines than we made before. Hard as that may seem, you know, often had wine, we've had it quite a few times, how could you possibly make a better wine than this? But we're working on it, right? We're just trying to get better and better and, and better at what we do and trying different winemaking techniques. I, I think that you'll find us still releasing a couple of other wines and you'll see us do some special really small batches of wine that we think are just ridiculously outstanding.